Um, the first objective is to tell you a bit about the Campbell and Cochrane Equity Methods Group. Um, this is just a screenshot of our website, but the Campbell and Cochrane Equity Methods Group is uh, co-registered with both Cam uh, Cochrane and Campbell. Um, and our goal is to encourage systematic review authors to think about equity in their reviews. Um, so we encourage authors to think about more than just the average effect of the intervention and uh, think about whether there could be different effectiveness depending on the population groups. So yeah, so so on the so the five thousand the Cochrane reviews and the uh, over a hundred Campbell reviews, it's really to apply an equity lens to say, are we really focusing on, on some results on the disadvantaged, uh, as a uh, second question to always ask in addition to looking at the average results, which we'll keep reinforcing through the talk. <laughs> Um, our second objective is to define health equity and talk about the social determinants of health. And so that goes to what Peter said, never accept the means or the averages without thinking about the distribution. So we just have a cartoon to get this piece started. So everyone here has got the same amount of food in the cartoon and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's fair. It might sound pretty good if you're the bunny, I guess, on the left, but if you're the horse, you might not be too happy. Um, and so that leads into the definition of health inequity. And so we use Margaret Whitehead's definition from 1991, and that's that the term inequity has a moral and ethical dimension and references in, in health outcomes that are unnecessary and avoidable, but would also be considered unfair. And we present it this way so that you can think about health inequities as having three main components. So there's a difference in health outcome, that difference is potentially avoidable, and that the difference is unacceptable and unfair. And you may have seen this graphic before because it's been presented a lot of times, but on the left, um, each person has been provided with a crate to, in order to see over the fence and see the baseball game. And um, while that's equal, it doesn't necessarily help the person who need it, who is on the right-hand side. And on the right-hand side of the picture, those three crates were redistributed so that the person who needed the biggest boost to see over their fence is able to see the baseball game, and the person on the left who didn't really need much help to begin with doesn't get it great. So this is sometimes uh, uh, described in the concept of horizontal versus vertical uh, equity. So the one on the left is uh, horizontal, uh, and the one on the left is uh, vertical. The ones in most in need should get more resources. And then another thing to consider for health equity is that context is really important. So hand washing prevents diarrhea, and probably if we did a poll on this, everybody would agree that 100% hand washing prevents diarrhea. But that's only true if clean water is available. And so we have an example of a study that assessed the effectiveness of um, alcohol-based hand rubs or hand sanitizers to prevent infectious diseases in Colombia. But um, in basically, in this population, there was limited access to clean tap water, so um, they had to assess a different intervention and they chose hand sanitizer. Um, so just that context is important because the interventions that we know to be effective, like hand washing, might not necessarily be appropriate in all contexts. And when we're thinking about um, interventions and uh, going to the community, we also sometimes need to think about the uh, what we call the staircase effect. So things that might have really good efficacy at the randomized control trial level um, might not have the same effectiveness at the community level. So there's a lot of steps that um, need to, that there's a lot of steps that could reduce the efficacy of the overall effectiveness. And so if we put some numbers in here, efficacy could be 86% for an intervention like um, bed nets to treat malaria, but people have to be able to access those bed nets. Um, people have to be able to um, get, uh, and people have to be able to use the bed net if they receive it. So that there's a lot of places along the chain where you could lose um, efficacy and end up with efficacy that's a lot lower. For example, with the bed nets, uh, frequently the bed net is stolen by the uh, father of the family and the uh, children are left uh, exposed. Uh, and so this is one of the reasons why you need to give multiple bed nets to uh, families. Uh, and this is also uh, sometimes described as the funnel of attrition, uh, and this is uh, the phrase that's used frequently in the Campbell collaboration. 